all right guys here's where we're at this morning yesterday i had some good footage of me taking this all apart but it was raining every 15 minutes blah 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 it didn't work what i was doing so we're going to start i was just replacing the studs in that axle but now we're going to have to replace the whole hub so long story short two years ago when i did the brakes put these back on i sheared this stud off because I used this 2,000 pound gun being lazy instead of a regular impact. And it slipped out of my hand and sheared this one off. But it held up for two years, it didn't leak. Last week I noticed some oil in here. So I went to go tighten this over the weekend and this one was spinning. So that one was sheared off. And you can see how far in they are. It's trying to weld all different, you know, normally if I could get studs out by welding nuts, but they're so deep and you can't get a socket in there to get on a nut because it's so that you know you, by the time you do it's a quarter inch nut which has no weld power so uh then this morning i put copper tubing in there filled the copper tube all the way up put a nut on it it's still gonna do it and time is money we're gonna pull these tires pull that hub go buy a brand new hub and uh i'll walk you through the process so not sure if you could notice but yesterday when i was filming the welding of I got too close with the uh, GoPro and I <laughs> melted the front lens of this camera, which good thing they're replaceable, but I don't have any now. So I don't know if you could see those little dots in there or not. But uh, you know, to take that axle off, you just pull all these bolts and then you hit right here with a hammer and then there's little wedges in there. You got to really beat on this and it, boop, 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 and it pops out, pops that off. And that's what the step we're at now these are those these are those wedges some trucks don't have the wedge style so they those wedges are on there they're real pain i mean it takes time to get that off but you'll see how that goes back on when we reinstall it so first thing we're going to do is pull the lug nuts all right guys so the first thing you want to do is make sure you know you see that l on there on the stud there's an l that means it's left hand thread a lot of trucks on the driver's side are left hand thread and on the other side are normal lefty loosey righty tighty but these are the opposite so make sure you read you see that l otherwise you're going to be tightening 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 and you'll shear that right off been there done that first time i go are you kidding me i didn't know years ago so you got to go on the right see come right off and i'm going right Hang on to her, big guy! Jesus! This gun is dangerous. It'll tear your leg right off. So now these ones are another set of studs and I had a guy come change a tire over the winter two foot of snow in the ground obviously he didn't tighten these too good because these should still be tight they were walking off when I pulled the outer nuts so maybe it's a blessing this is happening because these were a little loose same scenario see then there's your stud under there so if you're not familiar with this socket it's a two-way socket first does the outer with this then inside there you see that square that gets that so that goes in there locks that square the outer one the inner one it's a two-way socket but again these should have been tight 
which when I pulled the nut, it pulled these too, because it froze to the nut a little bit, but it shouldn't have done that. They, they weren't, these weren't snug down to torque. It's gonna be about 500 foot pounds maximum. Otherwise you stretch your studs. Right to you. Heavy little guys. Set right on there. All right. So here's our hub. We got to fire up the truck. Release the brakes. Chuck the wheels so the truck don't roll. Release the brakes to get this drum off. This drum is right now. The brakes are pushed out. Got to release the brakes to pull this. Then we got to pull all this and get that off. So. I like to use clean diesel fuel. I got it in a nice container. So when I take all these parts off, I put them in there. It washes all the stuff out of the bearings. It keeps them in a safe spot. Clean them all up. And uh, the truck's airing up now. We'll hit the yellow release. Only if the air, that red light's off. And uh, another container for all your lug nuts and everything. Cause you know, you put them there, next thing you know, you kick them under the truck, you're chasing them all day. Is it aired up yet? Is that red light off? All right, push in the, the yellow button. Once he pushes in that yellow release, the, this will become loose. See? She's loose now. So come off. Oh. That's your drum. Put all that brake dust in there, huh? Brakes are looking good and healthy though. I, re I try to, they're about two years old. Try not to use the brakes, use the gears, you know? So now we're to that point. Now we're gonna pull all this off. And then it's a nightmare to, cause I got new seals. I put all new seals on this. So you gotta beat that seal off. Be with you in a bit. So what I like to do, even though you still torque down your bearings and torque everything the way it should be just put a little paint mark you know at your axle huh? try to put a paint mark paint might be out of paint just so you know you got everything torqued somewhat uh because this nut will spin and then you're still going to torque it like i said and you play with it to this has no play but at least gives you a reference if this is way over here then you know hey let's double check something all right nice big socket for here tool for every job <sighs> turn that out and uh you know this one's actually in good shape you'll take these apart and there'll be tons of marks here from guys with chisels and they chisel them off and then they chisel them tight which you could do that i've done that myself uh but over the years i just bought that because I was sick of, uh, you know, when you chisel, you throw pieces of metal in there or it peens it and then it can break off at another time. So these are all keyed, so you can't really mess that up. That key, that key goes in there, so you can't mess that up. Let me grab paper towel. And always keep these in order, just in case you, you haven't done it before you wanna know. Take a picture of this too, if you've never done it before. That way you can put everything back the way it's supposed to be. All right, bearings are, so you just shake that, boop. Pop, it slips the bearing out. Let me clean my fingers. Inspect the bearing. Everything's rolling. There's no hot spots on it. Tight. Looking good. Put it, put it down. 
right into your diesel. That way she stays clean, nice, lubricated, and you're good to go on there. She's seeing there, looks nice. So this is gonna be loose. The only thing holding it on right now is a seal. And being that that seal, get that dust off there. Being that that seal's not that old, sometimes they hang up and they're hard. So they won't come off like this. You really gotta try to hit them back here. Or two guys pull on them. And we're gonna do that now. So grab right a hold of her. I'll work it up and down and we'll pull out. Ah. There she goes. There, there she, there's the seal right there. And there's a bunch of oil. Grab uh let me pull this out here. Alright, so let's clean that up. Paper towels. Got a little oil, but don't worry, this is a big road plate. Nothing goes on the ground. So then you're gonna inspect your inspect your spindle. Make sure she's all good. There's no digs or tears. And everything looks good. And especially right here where this new seal's going on. Take some emery cloth and polish this up. Clean it all up. And you can take emery, you know, something real nice and just make sure there's no, nothing, no birds or nothing on this, which there shouldn't be unless you had a failure. But always clean this because dirt gets in the back side of that seal and the new seal may go on to there a little bit. Clean it with your cleaners. Polish it up till she's chrome like that and uh the new seal will go on a lot easier all right so we're to the point where we got to get parts i'm gonna bring the hub down to fleet pride get a new hub and uh go from there so like i was saying you know 15 minutes to pull that still got the bearing we got to get back here uh you got this is the back seal here's the bearing inside so you got to pull this seal and uh Get that bearing out. Sometimes these can be real pain too. And you don't want to hurt that bearing, that's for sure. So, prying on the bearing isn't. You don't want to push too much, too bad on there. Once you bend that over like that, you just got to be careful you don't hit that if you were going to keep this hub. But I really didn't care, but I didn't hit it anyways. Then you can get in here with your tools. <sighs> Another nifty trick. I'll show you in a second. You can see how this is wobbly. Grab my drum. Me. This is a good little tip. Pro tip as I call it. Bring that drum. Set it right down on here. Take your drum. Then these studs, it goes in, the studs go in. See that? Now you got a bench. Just put everything in the backwards as it, as it went on the truck. Gives you a little more stability for prying without fighting it. And there she is. There's the seal. There's the seal. There's the bearing. Now you gotta be sure to put that bearing in first before you put that seal on. Otherwise you'll never get that bearing in. All right, going to get parts. We'll be right back. All right guys, bad news on the parts. Fleet Pride didn't have the hub. They can't get a hub, it's in California. Now that the hub's off, I and I can face it straight down, I could probably weld those out. I'm gonna try to do that to get this truck back on the road. Worst case scenario, I'll have to order that hub by this afternoon and it will be three, four days out, which really holds us up. And uh, of course, it's double the money of a, a normal hub and it is what it is at this point. All right, guys, we're back. I did find a stud uh that at this other place that stud that's there was uh sheared off halfway up 
from I had a flat over the winter and roadside mechanic decided to strip that out and not tell me so this is what we're gonna attempt now piece of copper tubing three eighths people only have four of these pieces so I got four shots right now it's about well this is the sick this goes down in there, it fits nice. A uh, half inch won't fit in, you gotta use three eighths. So that's gonna go down in, then we're gonna fill that whole cavity with weld, then weld the nut on it, and try to extract that stud. If we do that, we'll be in business. I got all the parts to put it back together today. We'll see how it goes. I wish they had the hub in stock, we'd have it all together in about 15 minutes, but it is what it is at this point. You may still have to order in a hub. You want to tap that down in nice so that flares at the bottom so you don't get no weld. So no weld escapes. be careful you don't distort that nut so you can get a wrench on it and uh, we'll let that cool down for a little bit try to extract it we'll see what happens let's start this one let that one cool those uh you see fired up fired up nice they're red hot i wish i had a bigger nut for that one that's one thing i forgot to grab was nuts i may have to run down and grab more nuts and go to a different supplier to grab that more three quarters a lot of times this takes you know five six times of heat cycles each time you draw heat in there it uh loosens that stud but with the wheel down like this I'm getting better penetration down into it rather on the side where the weld wants to roll out but uh yeah I mean this is where we're at so if they had the parts in stock I'd be already installed and not back on the road I just I hate putting all that heat to this hub but at this point it is what it is we'll get her it's a used truck you know it's not brand new so Get her back together and work and making money. Right now we're losing. At least I got Miko on the job. He, he just left. He went to a different site. So we'll let these cool just a little bit longer and I'll get right back at you. So here's the stud I was telling you about. The guy cross threaded it. 
then that remember those nuts go this sleeve goes over that so you can see inside there where it broke it broke there he cross threaded it and just wrote, drove it right in there he may have not known i mean he knew he cross threaded and he drove it home don't get me wrong but he didn't bother telling me or karen so whatever at least i caught it and uh obviously i would have when i put it back on but i didn't see it when i took it off all right Something's turning in there. It could be just the copper turning broke loose from the stud. Don't know yet until you work it up. It just feels like, yeah, I don't feel like it got it. This one, I had the nut. I just snapped the nut off. I got to get a bigger, bigger nuts to get more uh, weld on there. This one just feels like it's the copper spinning in there, but we won't know. It's not, don't know. It's coming up, but I don't know if it's coming up because the copper's bringing it up or the studs coming out let's see huh. ah you see the weld i got on there there's the copper Whew. i don't know we'll have to give it another whirl i mean it's definitely doable just gotta get it keep doing it, i guess Got a bigger nut this time. Man, can't see the fire with the mask on. He burnt me good. Yeehaw. Fun times, man. Gotta love trucking. Gotta love trucking. Gonna we'll get a nut for that side. It's getting a weld. That's for sure. It's definitely welded. It's just ain't pulling it out. I may bring this over to my boys at the machine shop they, that, see, I don't even have patience to let it cool down enough but I may have to bring it over there let them tool on it see what they think check back alright guys I just dropped off that hub at uh, my local machine shop those guys are great over there um, see what they could do they said they'll know in an hour if they can even mess with it if not I'm going to order that one it's coming out of Atlanta and you know, it's gonna be a couple days probably before this is back, but. So before I do that, I just wanna clean this up. Some brake cleaner where that seal's gonna go. Get all that dust and crap off there. Cause when that new seal gets on there, you want it to be no dirt under it. Or sometimes, you know, rust gets in here and all that if, you know, this was recently changed a couple, you know, a year and a half ago, so. It's not that bad. Seal's probably only gonna go right about to there, not all the way. But I'll hit that with some emery cloth anyways right before we install, but always keep it clean. All right guys, super stoked. Before the end of the day, the machine shop, you know, 20 minutes they said they had it out. They drilled it, even through my weld and then the tap I broke last year in there and they got it. Uh, if you guys, I know a couple local guys uh, watch my channel meridians and skodak if you ever need any hydraulic or machine uh machine work done these guys are the best they are unbelievable family owned i'm sure you know who they are if you're local but um yeah so these studs were down at fleet parts the only ones they had that uh so they're a little bit longer which ain't a big deal so they didn't have the ones that, that are that size. That's why that's not down in there. But I'm going to get this all cleaned up. The gasket. I had some weld splatter on there. I just had to file off. Uh, but yeah. Normally in a perfect world. Obviously if that bolt wasn't down in an inch. And I wasn't pushing for time. That welding trick always works. I was, I was disappointed. I couldn't show you guys that. Um, because I do that all the time. On manifold bolts or any kind of stud. If that was flush. You just weld the nut on it. 
let it cool off and it will pull out and if i had enough time i probably could have got those but again i don't have the time and save it to the professionals that do that every day so i'm going to get this cleaned up just with a razor knife start cleaning the old gasket like this and we we'll, should be good to go and then we'll install it got that all cleaned off got the gasket cleaned off uh double nut it put two nuts on it then you can drive the stud down in there she is that's nice and tight she won't come out now just want to clean that with some emery where the seal is going just hit it hit her up just hit this up so nice just so that if you nick that seal she will leak and then I've had that you know once these seals go then the, your brakes go because all the oil goes down in and uh, gets in the drum then you got to buy a new drum well, the drum you could clean but you might as well buy a new one if you're gonna do the brakes I always do um, another thing is make sure when you jack that up I had this in the first video that I deleted already but jack this up enough to where the fluid stays on the other side of the rear end otherwise you're gonna have to lose a lot of fluid till it gets down to level but if you get the axles pitching that way then 90 percent of your fluids over there and you'll just get a couple drips when you go to take this axle out here's our new stud that the roadside mechanic broke so i got that you're just gonna put that in there it's got splines hit it with a hammer Make sure we're not hitting nothing down there. Yeah, we're good. Drive her in. So she makes a different sound. Done. I'm very particular about keeping it all clean. I don't want no metal. And I'll even put a magnet in there. All right, I got my... Uh bearings been soaking in diesel fuel rotate them like this a few times get them all nice and clean make sure they're all they got nothing in them make sure they're all rotating not binding up not too much play in there set your bearing in and i i lube all oh, wrong bearing hang on <laughs> Set your bearing in. Make sure she's spinning good. Get you here. Make sure she's spinning all nice and free. Take your seal. You always remember, put that bearing in first. I've done this one time where I put the seal in first and then forgot the bearing. One of my first rodeos. I just take a little... I usually use... Uh, WD-40, but I don't have any, so I'm just rubbing some diesel fuel on there, which is a lubricant. Get this started. So once that's in, I want to make sure she's flush like that. Hey, all right. And some people beat them with a four x four. That's the old school way. I've done them like that too, but you don't get a good seal. Got a seal press. Put that on there. Push that in. And give it an old beating. Until she goes in flat. And you'll hear the different sound when it bottoms out. All right, she's in. Next step, putting the hub on. I like to lubricate all this. I use some diesel on here, because I don't have the 40. I'll get everything all lubricated up nice. That's that seal slide on. You gotta be careful when you come with your seal that you don't hit this. These are sharp and you'll burn that seal and then uh, you'll be leaking.
Careful not to nick that. that bearing in there. Hang on, got a piece of wood. Make sure she's all clean, center that up. Put that bearing in there and that will hold, that will screw this hub up so you can get your seal on better. But as soon as I slid that in, it went whoop, and it centers it perfectly in here. Now, she's a good, a good. So, and once you draw this in, you're gonna bind it tight and then back it back off and it will seal the bearing, it will set the bearing. And it will, uh, let's clean all this up. Always have the diesel here. And always remember how your parts come off. That's a, another thing, take pictures or whatever. So I just got that hand tight. Now I'll take this, set that on there. See if I can get a little more. Yep, see, just a little bit. She's just about there. And then you can take this, get in here. Hit that. And you can tell you hear the ringing when it's bottomed out. But do hit all four corners like that. Peace of mind. Look, a little bit more. All right. And when you tighten this, you always want to keep, when you tighten your nuts, always keep this rotating. Just don't tighten them down without rotating this because you can get that bearing not nice and pretty, you know. Clean the parts. This has got a cotter, remember the cotter? Let me bring you in a little closer here. I don't like you this far away. Get in here where you can see. All right, you probably can see a little better now. Keep your uh, keyway, keyway. But before we do that, we're gonna tighten that a little more. And then that locks all that in. But stay with me. I'm just gonna get my other tool right here. And you're gonna turn this while you rotate this. Use your shoulder like I am. See how I'm using the shoulder? Rotate this and put pressure up, put pressure up until she stops. Just enough so you seat that baron. Then we're gonna back her off. Alright? Uh, so she's nice and tight there. I'm gonna give it one little bit more. All right. Make sure she keeps going. Wanna try, I know it's difficult, but try to do these at the same time. All right, that's super tight. Too tight, you know, so, but you tighten it to seat that seal and your bearings. Now we're gonna back it off a bit. And there's a pound of torque spec for it. But not all trucks go to that torque spec because I've done that. And I torque it to the spec and my, and my bearings are loose because it's war, you know, to use truck. So your tolerances change over time, I believe. Don't take that, I'm just saying, in my experience, don't take that uh, to the bank. I'm sure there's guys that'll say no way, but 
So you just keep loosening it till you feel comfortable where there's not so much drag because if you have this too tight, you'll burn the bearings right out. All right, on to the next step. We will, uh, this goes on there and I, and I have painted some marks on there. So you see, that goes in there, okay? Now, this is your dilemma. There's your tab, it has to hit that circle. So do we want to tighten it to this or do we want to loosen it? That's your judgment call, you know? And I believe we're definitely not gonna loosen it to this one because if we loosen it to that one, it's too loose. We'll go right up, let's just see. If we loosen it to there, it fits nice. And that does, is nice, it's perfect. It's perfect, so that is was the one you go. And if we went to the next one, it might have been too tight. So that is just enough where you can spin it with your hand. It's not wobbling, can't go in and out. I'm happy with that. All right, then you're gonna put, then you're gonna put this on. Clean her off, remember I had my paint mark on there. There's the paint mark inside there. She's feeling good. A little bit more as I spin it. And the paint marks line up perfect. So I'd say that's a nice install right there. Everything's working, nothing's moving. Now all we got left is the axle and your uh, gasket. Bolt that bad boy on. Time to put the wheels on. Be with you in a bit. You gotta make sure you clean the bottom of this. Right here, hit a little paper and uh, make sure she's all, that old gas gets off. And hit it with a little cleaner. Should be good to go. All right, let's put your gasket on. I got the axle in my other hand, that's why I can't do two hands here. So this axle, two splines because it's a locking differential. When you lock the wheels, it locks it in. And uh, that's why you have two splines. The other side of the axle will be just one spline. It won't have two. Just in case you're wondering. So when you put this in, ooh, just put her in. And you have to line up those splines, it's pretty easy. Just slide her forward. Rotate it and work work it like this back and forth. See it just went in the first spline. There's the second spline. She's done. Then you just keep wiggling it back and forth. She go in just like that. Then you got you grab them. These wedges they call them. Some trucks don't have these. They just like this, and you put the bolts on them. But the, this is what I was explaining in the video that got deleted was when I took this off these wedges go on like that then they center this and then the bolts go on which you'll see in a minute but to get this off you really got to beat this and it takes time to get this off you can see where guys peeing this trying to get this off before but the best way is to hit this part with a sledgehammer and it rings them and these will go bing and it'll pop out but sometimes they got all that goop on there from instead of people using gaskets they use the goop and they do not like to come out it could you'll fight it so I bought new ones anyways. I'm gonna put those on. And uh, just cause I wanted some nice shiny stuff on this rusty truck. We'll put those on. You see how those would go on a lot easier than the, the old ones. The old ones you actually got a thread on because see that slot? It's open now, but when you tighten them down, 
it crimps it. So the old ones do not go on or off easily at all. Then I bought a couple new nuts for the new bolts. Hey. All right, my battery died, so I waited. Charger up 50%. So we just, I just uh, got these snug enough. I'll torque them after the wheels and stuff are on because this still turns. You gotta air up the truck and you gotta release the brakes to get this drum on and you'll see that go down. Once that goes down, you won't be able to get this on. Sorry for the moaning. She's a little heavy. I got tennis elbow, and that really burns. So you slide that on. Line them up. Get them on. Done. All right. Now, theoretically, I can hit the brake and torque these down, but we're just going to get the wheels on right now. Really don't matter if these are, you try to line these up, but they send them themselves once you get the hit the brakes. If they put the bolts in, whatever, I don't know. Because they all don't line up. It may not make sense. Just sounds good at the time. All right, time for the wheels. Move you out of the way. that almost caught me so much damn oil on this metal plate she slipped out Whew. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right let's try that again all right see now I got the truck up in the air more than you really need but that was because the oil had to go over that way so I really could lower it but I'm not gonna Alright. Line her up. Let's jiggle, 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 jiggle. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Get in there, boy. Alright. Lefty, Lucy, not in this case. Remember, opposite threads. So you gotta go left to tighten these. And if you don't remember, they got a little L on all the studs. Line them up. This gun, this gun's a thousand pound torque. A lot easier to use than that big, big one I had to take them off. You want to make sure there's no debris in here. You get one little piece of mud, you know, we're always in mud, all us truckers getting off-road and whatnot. You got mud in there now, falls down in a rock or whatever, a pebble, you'll have trouble. You'll think it's tight, and then you'll be going down the road about two miles, get a serious wobble. So just make sure that's clean. And then, another tip, it's got to go opposite. So I'm gonna put my valve stem right here. Just make sure you put the other one the opposite way. Slip it on the grays. Come on. Oh, there you 
go. Get on in there, boy. There she had be. Where's my newbie? There she is. Lower the jack. Don't forget to torque these up after you got the wheels down. All right, guys, that's it. That install was a super duper success. Uh, 20, 15, 20 minutes to take the whole thing off. Wish I could have got it welded out, the stud for you, just to show you that. I mean, as an owner operator, you will see a lot of videos like this because that we do 90% of our repairs and as anybody knows it's owns a construction business you break down a lot and uh, we just fix what we can if we can't we bring it to the professionals you know but uh, if you like that please subscribe and uh, we'll be trucking tomorrow oh yeah baby oh yeah